Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here. It's time for another book list. Another book list that was inspired by a comment that one of you fine people left behind. So uh, thank you for the content ideas. And this one was a good one because I really had to go back through my own personal uh, reading, or I guess in this case, listening um, history and really sort of have the battle royale that I haven't really thought of before of not just, hey, is this book great? But also, is this narrator great? Um, I'm terrible at headlining my videos. Hey, this is my top audiobooks of all time. <laughs> So, like I said, this is my top audiobooks of all time. Have I listened to every audiobook? No, absolutely not. So this is just going to be restricted to my personal favorites, but I am very interested what your personal favorites are. So, as always, leave those in the comments so that I can uh, take a look at them, or I guess take a listen at them. Yeah, that makes sense. And just a quick disclaimer up front, Crying in H Mart will not be on this list. It will not be on this list. I've talked about it too much. I talked about it in my top uh, books by women. I talked about it on TikTok like three or four times I've talked about it on TikTok. I'm not mentioning it again, except for right now when I'm telling you it is an honorable mention. Crying in H Mart, the audiobook is read by Michelle Zahner herself, and it just adds to the heartbreak. It adds to the heartbreak because you're not just reading her saying Uma when her mother is dying, you are hearing the actual woman who experienced those emotions read those words to you, and it just takes its hand and goes <coughs> and shows you your beating heart. And then makes you super hungry for Korean food because there's a lot of that in the book too. Uh, honorable mention Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. All right, now to the list proper. My number 10 pick is A Promised Land by former President Barack Obama. Now, this is a weird placement, I know, uh, for a Nobel Prize winner and a former two-term president of the United States, a beloved two-term president of the United States. Um, president Obama and I have a lot of differences of opinion on politics themselves, but not just different but not difference of opinion on the capabilities and potential of America. I think America is not reaching its potential, um, and I would believe that the former president uh, agrees with me in that fact, even though there are many policy things that we disagree on. Um. So the story starts about when uh, President Obama is in... I've done like six takes of this. This is why I'm laughing. The story begins when President Obama is starting his law school career, moving on to being a Illinois state senator, a U.S. senator, and then a presidential candidate against Senator John McCain. It goes through his first term, his trials and tribulations there, in particular with the uh, financial cri crisis of the late 2000s. Um, and wraps up around the time of when the campaigning for his second term starts. That wasn't so hard, was it? A lot of what made President Obama such a wonderful speaker really comes through in this audiobook because he has just a control of his voice that is, I think, unmatched in current um, political figures. I don't think anyone else really understands their way of speaking more than he did intelligently. I'll just leave that at that. You know what I'm talking about. You know. And the word choice that the president picked for himself, because he wrote every word of this himself, he was, <laughs> he's in interviews been a little uh, shady towards his wife for using a ghostwriter for her memoir. Uh, hilarious. Which brings me to another point of this book. He doesn't pull any punches on showing just how mean Michelle can be to him. Like, she talks some mad shit to him, and he does not sanitize it at all for this memoir. And it's it's really kind of funny to watch. So I wonder if she was, like, reading the book and be like, Oh, so we're telling them about that, huh, Barack? All right, all right, we're telling the people about that. Cool. And he's like, well, Michelle... If you didn't feel like bubble shop, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Yep. You got you got two words of my President Obama impression. We're moving on to number nine. We're moving on to number nine. All right. 
This novel is a novel that I need to talk about uh, just on TikTok in general because I don't think enough people know about this novel. This is A Naked Singularity by Sergio de la Pava. Um, it is one of the most uh, fascinating novels I've ever read. It's so ambitious in its scope and what it sets out to accomplish and the fact that it accomplishes everything that it sets out is incredible. Uh, there was recently a movie made of it starring John Boyega, which uh, everyone says is pretty not good, so don't don't watch that before you read the novel or listen to this audiobook, um, because the movie was like only like an hour and a half long, and this book is kind of long and has a lot going on, so they left out a lot of what makes this book special and a lot of what makes it um, fascinating. As for the narration, uh, Luis Moreno does a fantastic job really getting you to know Casey as a person, not just from the things he does and says, but from the way he says them, um, which I think is the mark of a really good audiobook narrator. And he does a great job of highlighting the emotional beats within the story. Um, like, for example, the way he talks about the villain La Ballena is... It chills you. It gives you chills down your back. It's a great book that not enough people know about, so hey, get the audiobook. Give it a listen. You'll appreciate it, I'm sure. All right, so this is the first one of two cheats that are on this list. Uh, the number eight spot, because that's where I am, right? Yup. The number eight spot is going to be The Lord of the Rings, which, yes, technically is three books, but also is technically just one book, so I'm counting it. Uh, specifically, the ones narrated by Andy Serkis. So not only is Andy Serkis uh, just a wonderful actor, he has such a silky smooth, such a silky smooth voice. He knows, he knows how to play upon his voice as he doth an instrument. So that's great, first and foremost. And you get sort of his take on a lot of the other characters too, like Gandalf, Aragorn, uh, Frodo, all of that. But I mean, we all know what we're really here for. Andy Serkis. Sneaker. Yeah, so. I'm not going to belabor it too long. You, uh, you know what the Lord of the Rings are. How could you not at this point? Moving on. Number seven. All right, number seven is going to be True Grit by Charles Portis, and it is narrated by Donna Tartt. Now, Donna Tartt has come up in a few of my other videos, in particular on TikTok, and my last video here of my favorite books by women. Uh, spoiler alert, she wrote my favorite book by women's, uh, which is The Secret History. She narrates the audiobook to True Grit, which is a touchstone of the Western genre, both as a novel and as two different movies, one starring John Wayne and one starring Jeff Bridges, directed by the Coen brothers. And it comes from the point of view of a young girl, Hattie, so it works for uh, Donna Tartt's, let's say, more diminutive-sounding voice, first and foremost, but she has such... She has such a command of language herself that she understands the command of language that Charles Portis had. And she can deliver some of the more funny aspects of the novel in a just wonderful way. There's this great moment in the novel where uh, to, to avenge her father, uh, uh, Maddie is looking for um, a, a lawman, a bounty hunter, a marshal, to uh, track down the men that killed her father and get revenge. And the guy that's sort of pointing her in like the different direction goes, well, there's this one guy who, you know, he's plain and true and he understands the law and he does good work. And then of course there's Rooster Cogburn who's the most ill-tempered, salty bitch I've ever heard in my life. So I would say go for the first guy. And without skipping a beat, Maddie goes, where do I find this rooster? It's so good, and Donna Tartt does such a great job with it that um, do yourself a favor, have a Nobel Prize winner read you a Western. It's gonna be great. All right, this is my second cheat of the list where I'm doing another trilogy as an entry. Um, I'm sorry, please forgive me, love you. Um, and this is going to be the Illuminatus trilogy. Now the Illuminatus trilogy is one of the most batshit insane things that I have ever uh, experienced in my life. I experienced it first as audiobooks and then went and sought out a uh, hardcover copy of it because I loved it so much. The long and short of the trilogy is that, oh man, how do you even break down the Illuminatus trilogy? Let's just say 
if you took all of the Illuminati conspiracy theories and forced them into a sort of end of the world, Lovecraftian, chosen one, double cross, secret identity type narrative, you would get the Illuminatus trilogy. And the first one in the series, The Eye in the Pyramid, um, that one only has two narrators. Um, I actually kind of really like this. There was one guy for just the, I'll put his name on the screen. I couldn't find it for this list, but I'll find it when I'm editing. It's right here. Uh, there's one guy who just does the, um, the like narration of the, uh, like the, the mise en scene and all of that, the non-dialogue, if you will. And then there's one other guy who does all of the dialogue. And that was really great. In the second one, The Golden Apple, and the third one, Leviathan, they expand to a full cast, which really brings a lot more diversity to what it is that you're hearing. Like, you don't get ear fatigue from just one guy who sounds like this, and then one guy doing all the voices like this. Um, but I do miss, I do miss the British dude from the first one who did, like, the general narration, the non-dialogue. Um, the story itself is insane. Just know that going in, and you'll have a great time. And uh, all three of them narrated so well. The story keeps you guessing, uh, but the narrators do a great job of bringing you along for the ride rather than just sort of like, oh, we'll see you at the end. So, yeah, the Illuminatus trilogy. All right, we're cracking into the top five here. This one is going to be A Confederacy of Dunces by uh, John Kennedy Toole. This book is one of the funniest books I've ever read in my life. Parts of it have not aged well. People pointed that out on TikTok, and I believe they are correct in that. Um, but you give it a, you can give it a pass, I think, because of how good the rest of it is. Um, and man, this audiobook, honestly, I think experience it in audiobook for, for bleh, honestly, I think experience it in audiobook form first, because this guy, this guy, his name, Barrett Whittier, his voice for the main character, Ignatius J. Riley, is so good. It is so funny that to this day, and if you have listened to this book, you know what I'm about to say. To this day, I don't say, oh my God. I say, oh my God. And it is such a wonderful refrain for the character that uh, Tool wrote. And the delivery is incredible. The story itself is just imagine like an intellectual incel Homer Simpson trying to make his way through uh, the underbelly of New Orleans without really knowing what's going on uh, and getting himself enmeshed in some criminal dealings. And it's just, it's such a good book. It's such a good book. And this, this narration, this audiobook is a great way to experience it. I highly recommend it. <laughs> All right, up next, number four, we have Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. Now, this is a weird pick for Neil Gaiman because um, he has so many famous books, uh, American Gods, uh, Anansi Boys, uh, The Graveyard Book, all of his short story collections are really good, and he himself narrates many of them. But I'm picking Norse Mythology for a couple different reasons. Um, one, it's not necessarily a story that Neil Gaiman himself uh, created. He read the Poetic Edda, the Prose Edda, and a bunch of the other Norse myths and sort of um, coalesced them into one cohesive-ish cohesive, cohesive -ish narrative. Um, but he himself narrates for If you've ever heard Neil Gaiman uh, speak, you know this man has, like, the butter voice. His voice is butter. Like, he speaks to you and you're like, yes, everything you're saying is true. This doesn't sound at all like this. I don't know why I'm doing this voice. It started, it started out sort of Alec Guinness, and, it, and now it's just slowly becoming Gavin Frey. Um, he really puts his heart and soul in it, and you can tell how much he really enjoys these stories. And he talks about how fascinated he is by Norse mythology, because the gods in this pantheon, they can die. Like, that's what Ragnarok is. It's the death of the gods. Um, so it's really interesting to see how much he puts of his own enthusiasm and excitement into this uh, retelling of these myths. I highly recommend it. 
All right, here we go. We're coming up on it. Number three is going to be A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess, narrated by Tom Hollander. Not Tom Holland, not Spider-Man, but instead the man who played Cutler Beckett in the two Pirates of the Caribbean sequels that are actually any good. So if you've ever tried to read A Clockwork Orange, you were greeted by NADSAT which is a made-up language that Burgess created for the novel and for the droogs in it to speak as sort of a kind of like slang that uh, the youth of that world speak in. And it is daunting to try to get into it, right? Tom Holland does such a great job as our main boy, Alex, that um, you will slowly, I would say actually quickly, you will quickly pick up through context, what the characters are saying in the NADSAT sort of slang language, to the point where, after listening to this book enough, you will start using a little bit of it in your daily life. I just then almost said a malenki bit because of this novel. Like, I refer to my eyes as glazies sometimes. Um, uh, I say malenki bit of Ludwig van all the time whenever I see Beethoven anywhere. Um, it'll get inside you as will this story. If you have seen Kubrick's movie of this, just know that Stanley Kubrick did not have access to the final chapter of the novel when he made the movie. So the ending is much less uh, grim, much less dark uh, than its movie counterpart. And I think actually kind of, um, kind of works better in my opinion. I know that might be a controversial opinion um, but yeah, I think the ending of the novel is better than the ending of the movie. So, uh, yeah, there, I said it. Number two right here is a book that many people, uh, they swear the only way you can get through it is, uh, audiobook. It's Moby Dick, and specifically narrated by a man named Henry Muller. And he does such a fantastic job bringing to life all of the different characters from Ishmael to Queequeg to Ahab to Starbuck to all of the denizens of the Pequod while also engaging you in the more uh, unusual um, side streets that Moby Dick takes us down, like the Cytology chapters, were only bearable because Muller is such a good narrator. And then like the other aspects, like, oof, that f the final, spoiler alert for a, a 19th century novel, um, the final showdown between Ahab and Moby Dick, oof, oof, when this man is saying, from hell's heart I stab at thee, Oh my God! You feel I'm I'm ch getting chills right now. You can't see it, but at my I got goosebumps. I got I got the gooseies. I got the gooseies. So yeah, if you are going to read Moby Dick and you are um, intimidated by the thick volume that Melville put together for us, uh, I highly recommend the audiobook version narrated by Henry Muller. And so we come to the number one. And um, if any of you are aware of this audiobook, you are not surprised that it is in fact number one, and that is Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders. Now not only is Lincoln in the Bardo a wildly imaginative novel based on the real life experience of the real life President Lincoln when his young son died, uh, it follows his spirit's journey through the Bardo, which is sort of like a uh, waiting room in certain Buddhist uh, um, like religions before you go on and continue your cycle of samsara. Um, and the cast of characters that Saunders wrote for it are just so compelling, so vivid and so interesting, but you gotta listen to this cast because it's huge. It's a huge cast of characters. It goes on for this long, which is insane. And some standouts are Nick Offerman, David Sedaris, uh, Cassandra Campbell as the narrator, Carrie Brownstein, George Saunders himself, Miranda July, Lena Dunham, Ben Stiller, Julianne Moore, I, I don't even remember her being in this, Bill Hader, Megan Mullally, Rain Wilson, Kat Dennings, Don Cheadle, George Saunders Sr., who I can only assume is George Saunders' dad, Patrick Wilson, Keegan-Michael Key, and an incredible amount of people. Like, I, it's dizzying to listen to, and at parts, 
the fast changing between who is speaking works so well with this just chorus of voices. So Lincoln and the Bardo, fantastic novel by itself. But for my money, it is the best audiobook of all time. And so we have reached the end of another list. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you watching. Um, what list should I do next? Apparently this is becoming a book list channel and honestly I'm okay with it. It makes me uh, really have to uh, think through things in an interesting and fun way and I like it. And you know what else I like? The fact that you are here. So if you want to follow me on some other places I'll include the links down below. Um, TikTok, my handle is Jen Insight. Instagram, Jen underscore Insight. Um, and hey, Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Like, times can get tough, and really making this content for everyone is what helps me sort of like order my thoughts, uh, keep away some of the more unpleasant thoughts and feelings that I could be having at any one moment. Uh, talking about books with all of you guys here and on TikTok um, really uh, makes me feel great. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks. Love you.